Sometimes talking with friends feels like role playing. Sometimes it feels like combat. Join us at the round table and roll initiative. This is Commudgeons and Dragons. Hello, adventurers! Welcome to Curmudgeons and Dragons. My name is Jason Portizo, and today I am joined by Mr. Jim Crocker. And hello, adventurers. Hello, Jim. Uh, it's just me and Jim today. We're doing a DM Academy episode. Uh, not that Josie doesn't like being a part of these episodes, but she uh, she's a sleepy girl, and she needs to take a she's down for, she's down for a nap right now. So she's <laughs> like, y'all, she's like, y'all do this one without me. I'm good. Good night. Yeah, she she represents the player in these episodes since she's not a DM. So we're just going to have a she the DM problem conclave. Player in these yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, she'll, uh, she'll be back soon enough. Um, and uh, if you catch up on the last couple episodes uh, and if you're watching on the YouTube, I put my microphone back to the mic that it was before because the one that I bought was way more broken than I thought it was. Uh, and I had to send that one back and get my money back, but it did fuck up our episode 100 for me. So uh, just know that uh, as much as it may have bothered you, it bothered me a lot more. Like a <laughs> lot much for that. Like a lot more. <laughs> he like was a lot, a lot more. Oh my god. <laughs> the second the episode was over, I was getting Discord messages about what a piece of crap that mic was. So Well, you yeah. didn't have to edit it for several hours, Jim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to listen to that crap for a long time. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. All right. Let's okay. uh these Steam Academy episodes. Uh so if you're if you're new here, first of all, hi. Second of all, uh, we're gonna go through Reddit's DM Academy a subreddit, um, looking for posts that are asking for advice. Um, and then we're going to uh, most of these are a blind reaction. A, a lot of these uh, we haven't read before. We haven't really looked at the comments. Uh, in fact, the ones that I picked out, I went by title alone. So uh, I have no idea what we got with today. So um, let's let's do this thing. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this thing. OK, so here we go. Let's uh, fire this up. This is short and sweet comes to us by UCM cycle 821. Now, this is about a month old here. Um, I just saw the title. I haven't really looked it over, but it's super short, but I think it's going to be an interesting discussion. It is it managing two warlock patrons need advice. I need some advice. I have two warlocks in my campaign, an old one and a fiend. Any advice for managing two warlock patrons without causing too much drama between the players or a massive headache for myself? And I love this because, like, I, I think Warlock Patrons is a thing that people get wrong a lot. Mm -hmm. So so this is a very interesting question to me. How do, you, how do you think they get it wrong? I think they get it wrong because I think um, really what Warlock Patrons are there for is to provide a justification for the class features of Warlocks. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, cool – and you can have narrative hooks and all this kind of stuff and everything – but the number of games that I see that take those warlock patrons, which are supposed to be kind of as remote and um, abstract as like, uh, you know, a, like gods that paladins worship or, you know, the, the gods that give the clerics their clerics their powers. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, some people like really like to just like bring those right into the game and make them front and center and, you know. Like I just the idea that somebody's warlock patron is secretly the big bad of the campaign mm. or something like that. Just I I don't feel like that's the the right way to handle it because you're you know you're you're centering that by by doing that you're centering that PC in a way that I don't think is necessarily helpful. Okay, but, yeah. So uh, by giving them a more passive role and less like treat them less like another character and more as just a uh a power source a power source because like the number of posts i see on dm academy and and occasionally in horror stories that say uh i put my warlock patron out there and i statted him up and they killed him so now what do i do do i take the warlock's powers away from them and it's like no 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 you don't because it's not <laughs> like that's right. not how that works it's just a right. a justification for the fact that they're you know like a different kind of wizard basically um and you could have story books on stuff. trees jim 
yeah, they can have story hooks and stuff and you can, you know, have them have influence and all this kind of stuff and everything. But I feel like if you, and, and also when you, um, introduce them in a way that other characters interact with them, they become less like a special thing that is, that w- belongs to that one character. That's the other thing that it should be, you know, like, like that should be like their special thing that, 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 that doesn't get messed with by everybody else. But so, which is to say with this question, I think honestly, it's actually fairly easy to manage two warlock patrons because you just keep them each in their own silo. They give the warlock the powers, the warlocks do their thing and they don't have to be at loggerheads. You don't have to have them, you know, like there's no reason on earth for um, the like, what are supposed like the old ones are supposed to be like remote, unknowable, like right, barely right. comprehensible by humans, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, there's no reason for them to even necessarily be aware of like what the warlock is doing in the way that we understand that. I mean, fiends are a little different, but even there, if the warlock is just kind of pulling the power down, um, then it doesn't have to be a whole thing where like, I mean, unless that's what you really want and everyone else in the game thinks that would be cool to have it be like about the clash between those two patrons. Sure. There's nothing that says that needs to be a conflict. Yeah, and I feel like uh, a patron isn't really paying much mind to what another warlock is doing. Like that's not his property. Yeah, I mean you're not you are, you are not even middle management in that organization, right? right. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're, you're like a, you're like a worker drone. That's uh, you know, if they're doling out power, like you're, you're not you're ruling un, a nation or or, so or anything you're, you're like you're that. You're an unpaid intern at best mm-hmm. if, uh, for the, mm-hmm. on the warlock side. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Um, yeah, so, so your, so your solution here is really just kind of, uh, let, let, take the, take the patrons back a step. If they're, if they're so forward that they're clashing with each other, then the problem started earlier. Yeah. It like, like you just don't have to do that. You avoid the headache by just saying, by just saying, I don't want this to be a headache. And so this is how we're going to handle it. You know, just, just don't have them. Uh, mixing it up with each other. If the if the players want to have a little bit of drama over their respective agendas, let the players set the tone for that. Mm-hmm. You don't need to force that on them. Uh, you know they'll they'll decide themselves whether they think it's fun to you know argue about whose patron is better or whether they just want to you know have fun and let that be their power source. Sure, I like it. All right, our next post is from user uh, Vina Schnitzel. I love it. Uh, Vina, <laughs> V-E-E-N-A, Vina Schnitzel. Um, that's fantastic. fantastic. Um, the post is titled, the, the title of the post is most of the post. I'm going to read the whole thing anyway. The title is, The Rogue Finds a Safe, DC-15 to Unlock, in the Old Abandoned House. They make a Thieves' Tools check for a total of 13. Now what? So that's the title. Let's get to the body of the post. Here. <laughs> that's, yeah. Do you ever just leave like the lead at least? Yeah. I know. Do you, do you ever like send an email like a, like a company wide email and like in the, in the subject line, you're like, I hope this finds everybody. Well, how are you doing? Kind of uh, happy birthday, Jim. Like, <laughs> yeah. Cause you didn't tab or whatever when you meant right, to right. The, the subject line. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Hug, hugs and kisses. Jason Portisa. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start sending subject lines of per my last email. <laughs> um but it's but it's not a reply so exactly yes yeah 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 they'll just assume it's all attached my please find yeah which is hilarious because i don't have email in my real job all right next um so the body of the post back to the thing let's do it uh <laughs> do you let the road roll again to unlock it what if they're oh my god it's like a lot of questions in a row uh do you let the roll do you let the road roll again to unlock it what if they roll an 11 next time should they just roll until they get it uh, would you say the lock is impossible to open because they missed it on the first try? There's a lot of like, okay, it's, it's, it's like a whole paragraph of, uh, every hypothetical. Um, but rather than go through all of that, uh, Jim, I know you've encountered this before because everybody encounters this. Yeah. Um, what do they do when, when they just can't unlock something? So, um, it depends, Jay, it depends. 
Um, well, what does it depend on, Jim? That it depends on like, do is there something essential in that safe that they need to continue with the adventure, mm -hmm. or is it like a tangential reward? Is it a cool thing um, that if they manage to get in there, they get in there? Like, is there time pressure? Is there uh, is the safe trapped or something like that? Yeah. Um, does an alarm go off? Um, I much prefer if you're going to do something like this. Um, I, like, I hate gating stuff, right? And and certainly if it's like if the safe contains the key that you need to open, you know, the next level of the dungeon, you don't want to do that because right, they, right. they got to get into it somehow. I like, oh, guess, guess we live here now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but it's like whenever I, whenever I come up with something or I encounter something, like I see something in a module that says basically like this is yes or no. Um, uh, I want to make the failure result interest as interesting as the success result, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, if you successfully open the safe, click it opens you get whatever's inside. Like if it's just, you know, whatever, some gold pieces or like a piece of jewelry or a document or something like that. Yeah. Um, minor you know, magic item or something. Yeah. Exactly. Like if you succeed, it pops open. If you fail, um, you know, that sets off the explosive rune and blows up whatever's inside. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, you know, or it sets off the alarm that lets, you know, the guard on the next level know that somebody's messing with the boss's safe, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like that kind of thing. And, and I do, and, and I do feel like it's important when you're doing that to be a little meta about it and tell the player that that's what's going on. Sure. To say, look, this is not like, you're going to get the safe open. The question is whether you can successfully, you know, work your way past the trap or the alarm or whatever. And that's what, that's the stakes of this. That's what we're rolling for so that then they can decide, do I want to spend inspiration? Do I want to use aid? You know, all yeah, of that yeah. kind of stuff. I would, I would let them figure that out with like some perception or something or an investigation or whatever. But, um, so, okay. So that's, that's a great solution. If, if the contents are, uh, in the grand scheme of things insignificant, um, what if it is a barrier to the next area? Um, and, and like the, the real answer is don't do that. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> exactly, I've, yeah. I've come across this in pre-made modules, um, mm -hmm. whether it's like book stuff, uh, or a lot of the, uh, a lot of the one shots that I'm getting from, uh, from, from various, uh, uh, campaign writers, um, where it's just like, okay, well there's, it just seems like a, it seems like an innocuous thing to throw in there. It's like, okay, between here and here, there's a gay DC 12 check. Um, it's like, okay, DC 12, you guys are level five. We, there's a rogue here with, with proficiency should be fine. Roll to two. It just happens. Mm -hmm. um, what what would you do in that situation if uh, let, let's let's say let's say it's not your fault that you you threw this gate in their gym, um, yep. and, we're, mm -hmm. and we're past we're past the point of of avoiding it in the first place. Got it. So 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 tiny little thing, little bit of a sidebar. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why we don't use critical fail on skill checks, mm -hmm. and why you shouldn't use critical fail on skill checks. Because if you're if you're one of these like a one always fails no matter what. And you're, you know, and you're like, and you set that DC 12 and you put that in your thing and you know that your rogue has a plus 14 to, right. you know, at a high enough level. Yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not even that bad. Like that, that's, exactly. not, that's, not even, that's not even anywhere near off the chart. Exactly. Yeah. Like they, like they just should never, like, like you, you don't even need to roll. And I feel like, like yes. you know, when, when, when your bonus equals the DC, just give it to them just, it just open, works, yeah. or whatever roll for fun if you want to but i don't you know that then you don't need to but um like there's crit, a number crit fails, crit fails on skill checks that's pathfinder talk right there that's a different game yes <laughs> yes which yeah, um, i i don't hate that rule but this is uh this is currently not a pathfinder uh uh podcast uh not until i start playing it more and then we can talk about it yeah i mean if you're just going to let them roll again you can do that but there should be something that like ups the stakes, like, mm -hmm. you know, um, if you, you know, like depending on the adventure design, if that adventure has uh, a wandering monster table with it, you know, 
You make the roll. If you fail the roll, I'm just going to roll on the wandering monster table. We'll see what happens if yep. somebody comes by. Nope. Cool. Make another check. You know, they fail it again. I'm going to make another wandering monster roll. We'll see what happens. And that's but just, believe, you know, whatever. Bup, 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 some, taking time. Somewhere in the, uh, in the PHB, there is... Uh, it'll define how long it takes to pick a lock. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not looking it up right now, but it's something like a minute or two or something like that. Yeah. Um, so if you have a wandering monster thing, like you can absolutely, you know, calculate it based on that. Uh, one of the modules I've run had minotaurs that were on patrol and every sure. 20 minutes, every 20 minutes they would come by. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I had to keep track of how long they were spending in every, uh, in every room and every action had time uh, attached to it. It was actually kind of cool. Uh, yep. If you love little math, which mm -hmm. I do, which I super, yeah. super do. Mm -hmm. If you don't like little math, don't run this campaign. <laughs> well, but, but even um, there, even there, you don't have to keep track of it by the minute. You can just say, um, you know, any typical skill check, if they fail it, they can try again. Yes. But the cost is I roll on the wandering monster table and see if somebody comes by while you're doing it. You know, and, and, keep and that, failing, that the, uh, the, the odds yeah. of that keeps going up. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, I'm going to roll a d20 on a, um, on a four or less uh, monster shows up. Are you going to try again? Six or less. Are you going to try yeah, again? Exactly. Or less. You know, whatever. But yeah, the, there you go. Yeah. Like plus two for each subsequent check or something like that, whatever. Um, yeah, I, but, I like that a lot. Um, and, of, and of course, this this does not include if they take a different, a completely different approach. Like if the rogue. And I was going to say, the, the other thing that you should do is make sure, like, if this is something you're writing up or if you're, like, reading through the module beforehand mm -hmm. and it says, Crack the safe, you know, uh, whatever, whatever, thieves tool, check, DC, blah, blah, and nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, come up with a couple of other ways to open that. Um, like the players know that they can use whatever knock or something like that, you know, the, like, like sure. they may come up with spells and stuff like that. But but have at the ready, you know, like it's DC 12 to unlock it, um, you know. DC 20 for the barbarian to lever it open with a crowbar, right? Yeah, Something say, like I was, that. I was going to say like 16 to punch it, but uh, <laughs> a lot, sure. and I will say a lot of the ones that I've, that I've been, uh, the, a lot of the pre-made ones that I've been looking at, uh, they are good about having both of those. Yeah. So, more than know, one DC, approach to, to, yeah, to get DC, the job done. DC 12 yeah. decks uh, with, with thieves tools uh, or DC 16 strength to, uh, yeah. uh, to break it. Uh, mm -hmm. So if they're taking a completely different approach, then go ahead and let them try it one after the other. And of course, yeah. uh, this is something we covered in our last DM Academy episode, where if somebody wants to uh, give a help action with actual real reason for it, mm -hmm. um, then uh, then they can do that, too. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily start with the consequences just yet. Let's do one more, Jim. I've got one from user Black Fear 2. Post is titled, should I mention something the character would probably know that the player probably did not take notes on? The party might soon meet a caster that a PC saw in a vision. Unfortunately, exam season put the campaign on hold for a month, and I fear that if he did not note her name down, he would not remember her. He probably did not. When they meet her, should I remind him? As in, her name is X, one that oddly enough you recognize. Some weeks ago, during your vision in the tomb, you heard Grandmir congratulate her for building the teleportation mechanism. That's it. It's a whole boast. Uh, my my immediate reaction: Yes, tell 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 the player that that tell the player that their character remembers this. The character did not take a month off for exams. You did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, yeah, I, it, it it was thirty six hours ago for the character. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah it was yesterday. <laughs> I put, mm -hmm. I put games on hold for months. Like, you know, I, I play in a, uh, in a campaign full of busy 30 and 40 year olds. And like, yes, we're, we're lucky we get to play once a month, yeah. um, which we did start playing in person. That's been helping a lot. But like, um, I don't remember names of, like normal people names that I met seconds ago. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Like, Jason, I wouldn't know who you were if your name weren't on the screen there. So it's currently on the I screen. Mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I working, working in concerts, I, I, I have to, you know, meet and be cordial with bands just about every single day. And, uh, you know, I'm not gonna remember the bass player's name. No one remembers the bass player's name. <laughs> <laughs> and there, and it's, it was always a normal name too. I'm like, Hey, I'm Jason. How you doing? They're like, Hey, I'm Steve. And I'll just tell him I uh, cool. I'm going to forget that. Please don't be insulted when I do. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so like, yes, uh, if a, if a, if a character knows something, the player should know that the character knows that thing. It is the exact opposite of metagaming. Mm -hmm. 
uh, bringing bringing in game knowledge out into the outside world. Totally, totally fine. Um, I think that should be uh, should be a staple. Um, and like some people aren't great note takers. I'm one of them. Josie, you should see her notes. They're they're like a psychopath. Um, I, I, every every little interaction she has is like a manifesto. So like you know I can't I can't do that. I can barely read my own handwriting, and I don't like doing it. Uh, she's actually so like, she's actually a decent student, so that's uh, you know yeah, no, that's, she, it doesn't surprise she's me good at, all. at that stuff. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. She's like a savant, but with with studying. Um, I think, listen, I uh, everyone's got their skills. Um, oh yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah, totally. Uh, if your if your character knows something, the player should know what the character knows, uh, and vice versa. If a character does not know something. Um, the character should not know that thing, even if the player does. So like uh, the the opposite of this is when that player had that vision, if you were narrating it out loud and the rest of, and the rest of the table heard you narrating it, because why would why wouldn't they um, mm-hmm. be weird to go to be like, hey, guys, can you just like leave for a second so I can like have mm-hmm. a little thing with Jim here for no. So they, they heard Some that. People they do, do that, though. Some people I'll do the like, I'll take you into the other room for this. And that's just like that's just a pain in the ass. Oh, uh, I, I, for small stuff, I definitely like text messaged uh, things that people find in like, you know, if, if they find a note somewhere, I'll text yeah, them what sure, the note I guess says. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. we've you know, we get uh, we call we call them DM whispers. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Where uh, especially when we played on Discord, we we, we would get direct messages <laughs> from the DM. Um, yeah. With like, there was like this shield that was trying to beckon us into hell. And like one by one, we were all being contacted by it, but we nobody <laughs> knew when the other people were. Yeah, until sure, it was sure. finally until it was finally my turn. I'm like, is that why everyone's been acting like an asshole? Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> that explains but, uh, a few things. But back yeah. to this. So, like, if if the players heard you tell that story, they don't know that the wizard saw the person in in the vision. So, like, um, their character should not be uh, acting as such. Um, yeah, but, and like I think it's even cool to do the thing where you like cut away to the citadel of the big bad and he's got a map and he points at the town where the characters are and he says uh you know my spies have reported that they're here find them uh you know just to kind of give a little foreshadowing and sure. whatever like you know the players don't know for sure that 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 like that that exact scene happened but if you're playing the game you know like they know that they're kind of constantly in danger and stuff like that so do a little flavor like that you know, kind of that, that is ostensibly like whatever meta knowledge. That's sure. total, that's totally fine. Yeah. Um, um, whatever, I, whatever, whatever moves the story along, that's what's important. And the other thing is, I mean, they're specifically talking about um, remembering a thing I told them before. Um, and that's one kind of thing that like, um, like the difference between there, there is a little bit of a difference between, your character would remember this and your character would know this, even though we haven't talked about it before this in the game. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like if you're the ranger and we're going into the great forest that we've never been to before, um, it is totally reasonable for you to say, okay, ranger, you would know that there's three paths through here and one of them you have to negotiate with the spider queen to use it. Oh, yeah. And the other is the centaurs and the other is this. And, you know, even, even though you kind of haven't covered that in the game yet, just having those lore dumps kind of come sort of through the characters, totally cool. And, and, you know, absolutely reasonable. Yeah. Your character's it. having a life before the party. And this is like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so let's take an extreme example of, uh, of what this post is asking. If you, if you meet a character and, uh, and like you know, they recognize you. They know you by name, but like you know, you don't re- you don't recognize them. Like you, Jim, don't recognize this person. And you have a whole conversation with them, and they're just like, "Oh, okay, uh, I guess you don't remember me." And then the, then the PC and the, the PC leaves, and then later you find out that was your mother. Of course, you're going to recognize <laughs> your mother. Like if it's a, if it's a character you recognize, your character is going to recognize that character. So like, oh, that's funny. So, it's an extreme example but like it's not that far mm-hmm. off so like mm-hmm. yeah if you're if you're if your uh character knows something tell the player what the character knows sometimes they need to know and especially like you just had exam season for the last month like that like cut the player some slack 
uh, not only should you give them information, but you also, uh, you know, maybe you can bring some snacks to uh, to the party because everybody needs to relax after exams. Yeah, I mean, and, and the other thing that um, that kind of varies from campaign to campaign, but that like I tend to err on the side of being a lot more transparent about is the idea that um, mechanics are how players understand what characters understand as 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 their experiences the things they know sure. right the fact that i know that a troll regenerates you know as a player i know that whatever a troll regenerates x hit points per round and isn't you know whatever immune to this or um mm-hmm. is you know like up you know as a character if you're an experienced adventurer you've heard of trolls you know you have to kill them with fire or acid um and whether you've actually fought them or not before, like once you get past a certain level, I kind of like I'm I'm pretty generous with like, well, you would know this about this monster. You understand how this works or you right. know, all you need to do is see a spell bounce off and you understand it's got resistance to this damage type. You know, that that is that that that's your player understanding of what the character just saw happened. And I'm mm-hmm. very generous with that uh, in terms of letting that kind of, you know, the one translate to the other. Now, I will say, and not to sound like a Paizo shill here for a minute, <laughs> but uh, in Pathfinder, it built into the mechanics in combat when, when it's the most rules heavy. One of the actions you could take on your turn is to gain information about your foe. So, like, if uh, if you want to use one of your actions to find out that the troll is immune to poison or whatever it is. Um, that's a thing you can, that's a thing you can learn. Yeah. Um, And that's, and and that's kind of cool because that makes like, you know, your bards and stuff like that, that might not have anything specific to do in that moment. You can use your whatever, not singing, learn it, learn it, shut it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To, 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 to essentially provide advantage for your, for your teammates. Another way to sort of a kind of indirect version of a help action. I like that a lot. All right, I think it's going to wrap it up for DM Academy. Um, we do episodes every single week now. Everything is on video. So if you're watching us on YouTube, hello. Um, I don't really have much else to push. I mean, we've got the Instagram. We've got the TikTok. Everything is at Curmudgeons and Dragons. Curmudgeonsdragons.com has links to everything, uh, including the today's show notes. Um, and we should say that if you want to, you know, bypass DM Academy and ask us questions directly, we are happy to field your DM advice questions, um, you know, just just straight up, right straight through through to us unfiltered. Yeah, uh, it's uh, Commanders and Dragons Pod at gmail dot com, or you can go to the contact page on Commanders and Dragons dot com. Uh, love to hear uh, anything you're anything you want to know. Uh, your horror stories, your questions about the game, um, or just pictures of your cat wearing adventurer garb. I'll take it. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, that's going to be it for today. Jim, thank you so much. You're very welcome. This was a lot of fun. Goodbye, adventurers. Thank you for listening to Commudgeons and Dragons. Please share this with your favorite adventurers. Leave a review on Apple and follow us on social media. All links can be found at curmudgeonsanddragons.com. Practice safe adventuring, my friends.